A crazy, hot woman who just got arrested drags a high schooler into her van. But the boy sees some chains and blades, so he is terribly afraid. Also, he witnesses her butt-kicking teenagers while naked. Maddie Barker, a cash-strapped resident of Montauk, New York, faces a predicament when her ex, Gary, tries to tow her car due to unpaid property taxes on her inherited house. Juggling bartending and driving for Uber as her sole income streams, losing her car is a financial blow she can't afford. Desperate, she attempts to use her charm on Gary, but her efforts crumble when her previous night's fling unexpectedly emerges from her home. While on roller skates on the way to work, Maddie encounters Gary parked at a store on her way to work. Despite her attempt to reclaim her car, she is caught in the act, prompting Gary to involve the police. Bailed out by a friend later, Maddie heads to work, frustrated by the increasing influx of wealthy individuals in Montauk, leading to higher property taxes for the locals. A confrontation with a rich customer results in her manager assigning her the task of folding napkins to cool down. Engaging in chores with her pregnant friend Sarah and her partner Jim, Sarah discovers an intriguing Craigslist ad. Helicopter parents seek a girl in her early 20s to date their introverted 19-year-old son over the summer, offering a car as compensation. Despite being 32, Maddie decides to throw her hat in the ring. The following day, she glides over to the expansive mansion, where the Jensen family warmly welcomes her inside. They pose some straightforward questions, but upon learning Maddie's age, they hesitate. Maddie persuades them by proposing a more mature perspective, asserting that the continued presence of the ad indicates previous young candidates have fallen short. Fortunately, her explanation convinces them. Their son, Percy, is a shy 19-year-old who prefers online interactions, abstains from drinking and smoking, and avoids parties. Concerned about Percy missing out on key experiences, the parents want him to enjoy life, date, and boost his confidence before heading to Princeton College. Trusting Maddie, they discuss an arrangement involving Percy's virginity with a strict condition that he must remain unaware of the agreement. Maddie borrows Jim's van, dons a revealing dress, and arrives at the animal shelter where Percy volunteers. While choosing a dog to adopt, Percy introduces Maddie to a dog named Buster with a drug addiction. During the paperwork process, Maddie's unconventional flirting makes Percy uneasy leading him to attempt an early exit. To prolong the interaction, Maddie invents reasons to continue talking with Percy. She offers him a ride home since she knows the address from his backpack. Despite Percy's attempts to evade Maddie, she persuades him otherwise. When he tries to take his bike home, Maddie takes charge, confiscating the bike and securing it in her van. On the journey, Maddie attempts to initiate the conversation with a kidnapping joke, adding to Percy's unease especially with the mysterious items in the back of the van that give off serial killer vibes. Percy grows fearful. Attempting to seek help on his phone, he finds it taken away by Maddie. Arriving at Maddie's place, Percy, mistakenly thinking he's being kidnapped, uses pepper spray on her, causing Maddie severe pain. Tearfully, Maddie explains that she's just attracted to Percy and wants to sleep with him. Percy helps her wash the spray from her eyes, and they agree to meet again for a real date the next day. Their date at a bar sees Percy attempting to order a soda, but Maddie steps in, ordering alcohol to teach him to handle his drinks before college. After some awkward flirting on Maddie's part, they head to the beach, where she suggests going for a swim. Percy initially refuses, but Maddie manages to distract him, eventually convincing him to join her in the ocean. However, some drunk kids steal their clothes and other stuff despite Maddie loudly yelling from the ocean for them to leave their things alone. As they start to walk away, she confidently emerges from the water naked and hits the teenagers. They scoot away, thinking she's mental. Maddie and Percy are back in the ocean, but Percy disapproves of using violence, which infuriates Maddie. She thinks Percy should learn to stand up for himself. Maddie leaves and heads back to her car. Percy, in the buff, follows her because she apparently took his clothes and phone. She tosses him his clothes but keeps his phone. Demanding its return, Percy jumps on the car hood. Maddie starts driving with Percy still on the hood, and as they hit the open road, they catch the attention of the police. Maddie doesn't want to get caught as she might lose her license. She crazily attempts to cross a railroad just in time before an oncoming train. Percy joins Maddie at her home, where she starts dancing for him leaving him unsure how to act. 
Maddie once again tries to entice him into bed, but Percy confesses he really wants to but is too nervous due to his lack of experience. Suddenly, he starts feeling itchy, and Maddie discovers he has an anxiety-induced rash. She grabs some cream and starts applying it. Opening up, Percy reveals his struggles with social awkwardness and the challenge of making friends only online. He also shares the peculiar fact that he's friends with his former nanny, Jody. In the following days, they hang out a lot, doing enjoyable activities. Percy becomes more at ease around Maddie. During an arcade visit, Percy uses his points to get a finger trap for Maddie, but she panics when she gets stuck. Maddie then shares that she's been living in her house her whole life, taking care of her unwell mom because her rich dad never stuck around, he was just a side fling. After opening up to each other, they decide to start dating before getting intimate. They connect over both missing their proms, and Percy gains the confidence to finally kiss Maddie. They take a walk and encounter Percy's former nanny, Jody, who doesn't have a fanny. Jody distracts Percy with a frisbee. When Jody asks Maddie about her intentions with Percy, assuming she's a gold digger, Maddie silences him by expressing genuine interest in Percy and revealing that Jody is the one after money. When Percy returns, they pretend to get along well. Back home, the doorbell rings, and it's a guy from Maddie's school days who she remembers him as the one who had a thing with the teacher. Now working as a realtor, he offers to buy her house, but Maddie turns down the deal due to emotional attachment. Later that night, Percy picks up Maddie in a limo for a fancy dinner, pretending it's their prom. They have a great time, and Percy opens up about wanting to avoid attention in school to avoid ridicule. Maddie playfully pressures him into playing the piano in the restaurant, threatening a toast about his prowess if he refuses. To her surprise, Percy is genuinely talented at playing and singing. When he returns to the table, Maddie can't help but shower him with compliments. However, their conversation is interrupted by Natalie, a family friend attending Princeton, who starts flirting with Percy, sparking Maddie's jealousy. Natalie invites Percy to a Princeton party, and he talks about his future plans, expressing his intention to visit Maddie every weekend. However, Maddie is not keen on long-distance relationships. Upset, Percy storms off, and Maddie follows in the limousine. The atmosphere is tense. Percy gets drunk and directs the driver to the Princeton party without informing Maddie. Upon arrival, Percy rushes into the party, and Maddie follows more slowly. She struggles to locate Percy until two girls inform her that he went upstairs with Natalie. Concerned about Percy potentially engaging in intimate activities, Maddie hurries upstairs. She knocks down the door of the room they're in, and Natalie insists nothing happened as Percy appears intoxicated and possibly under the influence of something. Maddie, in response, takes him to the bathroom and tries to induce vomiting, suspecting he might have taken something. To her surprise, he only consumed ibuprofen, which doesn't mix well with alcohol. Just then, the party host and his parents arrive, then tell Maddie to leave as she is too old for the party. Purse defends Maddie and attempts to strike the dad, who dodges the blow, leading the punch to land against Maddie's neck. During the car ride home, Percy apologizes to Maddie and expresses readiness for a more intimate connection. As Maddie prepares a condom, Percy unexpectedly declares his love for her. She steps back and advises him against it since he's drunk. The next day, Percy is in a great mood, telling his parents he's got a girlfriend and doesn't want to go to Princeton anymore. The Jensens are furious, so they call Maddie to figure out what's going on, but she beats them to it, saying Percy's getting too attached and she wants to cancel their deal. Despite the chaos, the parents tell Maddie she can still keep the car if she can convince Percy to stick with the Princeton plan. Percy messes around with the car stuff, playing music through the Bluetooth speaker connected to his parents' phone. He overhears them talking, finding out that Maddie is paid to hang out with him. It breaks his heart. Percy asks Maddie to lunch without telling his parents, and they're surprised when she shows up during dinner. Percy tries to make Maddie and his parents spill the truth, he gets a call from his buddy at the animal shelter who helps him wreck the car his parents promised Maddie. When he gets back home, he heads straight upstairs. Maddie goes up to check on him. He tries to get the truth out of her, but she keeps lying. Then he tells her he wants to get close to her. They agree, but before anything happens, he finishes prematurely. Afterward, Percy admits he knows about the deal and that he wrecked the car. Maddie apologizes and says she really likes him. When he ignores her, she gets mad and tells him some rich snob will never understand what it's like to be poor. 
Percy responds by saying she's wasting her life waiting for her rich daddy to apologize, and she leaves. Percy confronts his parents, demanding they stop meddling in his life. The breakup hits him hard, leading him back to old habits. Maddie arrives home to find her ex, Gary, fixing the broken car in her driveway. Despite its condition, she continues using it for her Uber job, employing intimidation to retain clients. Working tirelessly over the summer, Maddie finally saves enough to clear her debts. She celebrates with friends Sarah and Jim, who share their big news of moving to Florida because Montauk is getting expensive. Later that night, Maddie brings a random guy home, and they find Percy's finger trap. Trying to be funny, the guy puts his willy in it. Maddie kicks him out. Maddie realizes it's time to move on. The next morning, she fixes the car, apologizes to Gary, and decides to sell her house, but not just to anyone, but to Sarah and Jim. The one thing she wants to do is make amends with Percy. His parents reveal he's at a Princeton mixer. At the mixer, Maddie tries to apologize, but Percy angrily gets into his car. Climbing onto the hood, she holds on as he drives recklessly, hitting a fire pit that sets her jacket on fire. To save her, Percy drives into the sea, prompting Maddie to run after him. I in the midst of chaos. She finally apologizes, shedding a tear, and Percy forgives her. They discuss their future plans, Percy heads to Princeton, and Maddie decides to move to California. They agree to remain long-distance friends. Maddie sells her house to friends Sarah and Jim, preventing them from leaving Montauk. Percy bids farewell to his parents, and she finds Maddie offering him a ride to Princeton on her way to California, revealing she adopted Buster the dog. The three drive off into the sunset. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.